Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? I just dropped my husband off from our second Halloween party. We had a good time tonight. He is exhausted. He got up today and he had a bunch of work stuff that he had to do. And he had this huge event thing that he had to do this afternoon. And um, then he had stuff he had to do earlier today. So he's been going since early this morning. He was exhausted. And it was funny because like we were going from my um, sponsor's party to our friend Aaron's party. And he was like, it feels so early because it was like nine o'clock. And he was like, it feels so early. He was like, um, maybe I'll go out if like this party ends early. And he was like, cause I don't want to waste a cute costume. I was like, okay. He, uh, well, I was a skeleton. You can't really see it. I got this t-shirt from Spirit Halloween. Um, but it's like a skeleton face. I was like, I want to be comfortable today and nothing fit. So, um, I've got a skeleton shirt from Spirit Halloween and then I have on like blackish gray jean, Joe's jeans. And then I wore just my black vans. And um, I was super comfortable, and it was still Halloween-y, but it wasn't really a costume. I got black lipstick and black lip gloss, um, but it looked horrible. It just looked really stupid. I don't know. It, I, I thought it would look cute altogether, but it just really didn't. Um, so, yeah, we had a good time tonight. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, he was going all day long, so he was like, I am so tired. By the time that we left Aaron's, well, Jason and um, Alex were sitting there and they were both like falling asleep. And so Alex was like, um, are you ready to go? And Jason wanted to go. And Melissa's like, I want to stay later. There was like really nobody there left to the party. It was like like five people. And um, Melissa was like, I want to stay. I want to have a s'mores. And so she was like, let me go make a s'mores really quick and eat it. I could just tell like Jason was so tired. And I was like, Jason, I go, if we leave, they'll leave. <laughs> or she'll want to leave. And he goes, okay. So, um... So she got her s'mores and she came inside. I said, we're going to leave. And she goes, okay, well, we're going to leave too then. And I said, okay. And so we all walked out together. But, um, so I got up today. I'm trying to think of what I did. I listened to a lot of my audio book last night before I went to bed. Not a lot, but I listened to a little, some of it. I got really tired last night after, um, like when I started listening to my audio book, I got really tired and I actually headed home earlier than I thought I would from listening to it. I'm not going to finish it in time for Spookathon to be over, but I'm almost, I think, about halfway through it by now. Um, so anyway, I got up today and took care of the dogs, took the dogs out, gave PB his medicine and all of that, and then I started rendering the vlog and getting it up, and I kind of just like fussed around the house for a little bit, and um... Then I was like, I wasn't sure I was gonna make videos today because I didn't, when I woke up, have any idea what I was gonna wear to these parties tonight. And so I was like, well, oh, Alex texted me. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, Alex was gonna wear his shark onesie and then he texted me and he was like, I'm thinking about uh, wearing all black and then getting a hat and wearing my cape from last year. He had a black cape from last year. I don't know what he was last year, but anyway, I don't remember. But he was like, I'm going to wear my black cape from last year. And then I'm thinking about going as one of the male member, male coven members from American Horror Story um, Apocalypse. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a cute idea. So I'll get like a long black cape. And then I'll wear all black, and then we can just go as, like, cabin members from, you know. So that was what my plan was. And so then um, I got up, and um, I was, or I did all that, and then I was, like, leaving the house. I was like, well, I grabbed my camera. I was like, if I'm out, um, oh, I know what I was doing. I was, like, sitting on the patio with, the, like, the dogs and um, like watching them. And I was like, I always read totallythebomb.com. It's like this blog uh, website. It's really cute. It's where like all the secret menu drinks on Starbucks, I find all of them at. They're always posted on there. And um, 
Like, when I first found it, there was, like, I didn't hear anything about it. And now it's, like, every website I go to is, like, talking about this blog. So, this blog must be blowing up. But she does such cute things on there. You guys should check it out. It's such a fun blog to read. And I always find out stuff that, like, I didn't know. And so, it tells, she has articles on there. I mean, they're just, like, really short little blog articles. It totally reminds me of our blog back in the day that we wrote. But anyway... Um, it's it's so cute, and I, I love what she's doing on there, and it's like, oh, this really cute, like, unicorn thing for your car, or for, not for your car, for your front yard for Christmas. She had, like, that one on there, and then it was, like, um, there was, like, one alcoholic one on there today. I can't remember what it was. It was, like, some Halloween alcohol, and then she was, like, like, Adam's Family Pancakes that you can get at IHOP, and... It's not all food, though. It's other stuff, too. Um, she just has, like, other, like, stuff that she finds that's, like, hilarious. Sometimes she posts funny videos and stuff like that. It's real cute. So, if you haven't, if you just want, like, a blog to go read on a daily basis, you should check it out. It's called TotallyTheBomb.com. It's really a fun blog. So, anyway, I was, like, reading that, and I, I was looking to see if there were any Starbucks drinks, and there wasn't, but... She posted, I think, I think it was on there. I'm almost positive it was. About how this Panera Bread employee had made this TikTok video. If you, you know what TikTok is, it's like the real short little videos. All the kids are into it right now, you know. All the kids love the, the TikTok. It's like the new Snapchat. Well, TikTok was around before Snapchat was. So, I guess it's like the old TikTok. It's kind of TikTok. It's kind of like Vine, you know. So, anyway, um. Is that what it was called? Vine? Yeah, that's what it was called. So, this employee of Panera Bread uploaded this, like, it's literally like a six-second video. I watched it of um, how Panera Bread makes the mac and cheese. And that, like, she goes and she shows herself, like, taking this container, like this package, frozen, this frozen package out of a box, and then cutting it off, putting it in a bag of, like a bottle, a uh, bottle, um, a pot of like boiling water, and then, um, putting it in the bowl and serving it to the customer, and then she's like, and it got like 950,000 views, and it went viral, and so, apparently because it like called out Panera Bread for like not making their macaroni and cheese like in-house, like special or whatever, and it was this huge deal. So, I was like, mm, maybe I'll go review that if the Panera Bread drive through isn't that long. Which I kind of honestly thought it's going to be really long. So, I, um... Yeah, so I went, got my coffee. And then I drove through, or I drove by Panera Bread and it was, like, empty. So, I was like, I'm going to go do this review. So, I did this review of the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese is the bomb. It's totally the bomb.com. It is so good. Um, yeah, so go check out my review of that because I read the article and everything. And I called the video Trying Panera Bread's TikTok Famous Mac and Cheese. It was good though. And then, um, what did I do after that? Oh, after that, I went to Macy's. And I was like, I've got to find an all-black outfit. Now, I knew I had an all-black outfit at home, but I was like, I wanted something new. So, I tried all this stuff on you guys, and I was real frustrated because nothing fit. Nothing was comfortable. I hate that. I hate shopping when I'm, like, super fat. It's just, like, nothing fits. I'm just so, you know. So, anyway, I ended up getting a pair of jeans that were, like, 99 marked down to 69. And I didn't like, I, I still didn't love them. But I was like, they were black jeans. And they didn't have the brand that I like there. I, I really like the Macy's INC brand. Um, it's just like their brand, like Macy's brand. But um, they have like these slimming jeans. Slimming jeans. Well, they're like slim fit, but their waist is stretchy. And they fit me like really, really well. Um, and those are like my favorite jeans right now. And they're not very expensive at all. They're like like $49 and half the time they're on sale. So, if not more than that. Um, but they didn't have black jeans in my size. So then I got these other kind that were called like Buffalo. They were like similar, but then when I tried them on, they just like looked like they didn't look good. 
They look like 1980s dad jeans. But anyway, so I got, but I was getting those because I couldn't find anything else. And I was kind of like racing and I was like, I've been in there for too long anyway. And then I got this black hoodie that has these like skulls on it that are like into the material. But I didn't love that either. And then I bought this black turtleneck because that was originally my idea was to wear a black turtleneck with black jeans, black boots, like these black boots that I kind of, ankle boots that I have. They're not ankle boots, but I don't know how to explain it otherwise. They look like Clark shoes, but they're black and they lace up um, with a, what do you call it? A, um, a cape, a black cape. By that point, I was so frustrated with putting this cos costume together. I was like, I just want to be comfortable tonight. And none of the clothes that I was trying on were comfortable or anything. So from there, I went to Spirit Holly Hollywood. I said Spirit Halloween. I'm tired, you guys. I went to Spirit Halloween, the Halloween store, to buy a black cape. And I walked in. And the capes... Before I got to the capes, I got to like, they have this section that was all like uh, skeletons and they had all these t-shirts. And the first one I saw, I got two. It's like long sleeve, but I think it's, a it, cause it said plus size. It was like two XL and I held it up and I was like, that looks like maybe an XL. I think it was like a woman's like XL. <laughs> I was so tired and I was like grabbing this stuff just to like find something that would, you know that I could wear, and so I got that, and then I was like, ooh, I'll wear like black lipstick. I don't know why I thought that would look good. So I'm like rummaging around the store looking for black lipstick. I bought these two t-shirts, and then I went home. And then when I got home, I had wanted to make vid a, a video for my Peter Mont channel. I wanted to make videos on all my channels today, but by that point, I had started so late, and I was running around, and I got stuck in traffic forever, and it was like after five, and Alex was gonna be home at like six. Um, or after, a little bit after six. So I was, I like, got the dogs out, took them out, got all my stuff done, like put all my, putting all my stuff away. And then I like sat down and filmed the video. And then it, while I, oh, right before I started filming it, Alex texted me, he's like on my way home. And I was like, okay. And I knew once he got home, I wasn't gonna be able to make any videos. And by that point, it was so late. I was like, okay, <sighs> I gotta make one video, what's it gonna be? Um, and that's when I filmed the, is that before or after? I don't know, but anyway. Well, he texted me and told me he was on his way home because that's how I decided that I was gonna make the Peter Mon video. Then I put all the camera stuff away and the lights and everything. And then Alex came home and we were kind of in a rush situation and he changed. And then I took a quick shower and did my hair and stuff. And then we got ready in like a half an hour. And then we went over to my sponsor's party, and that was real fun. Oh, I was rushing because I had to feed the dogs, take the dogs out, all this kind of stuff. PB ate all of his dinner tonight. I'm very proud of him. Well, I mean, he didn't eat it when we first put it down, but I put, like, a little bit of Boo and Tucker's food in there, so, like, he has to kind of hunt for it and he tries the other food. But we left the plate down when we were gone, and I put a lot of food on the plate tonight, too. And when we got home, the food was gone, so he had eaten all the food. I'm very proud of him because he needs to be eating. So, um, we went to my sponsor's party and it started at seven and we got there like at 7.45. And we like pulled up to our house. <laughs> Alex is like, are you sure this is the right house? And I was like, yep. <laughs> and he's like, there's nobody here. And I go, I know. Um, and so we like walked up the driveway and she was like standing at the top of her driveway. Her house is like set back in the woods. And she was like standing at the top of her driveway talking to somebody with her dog. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God. So she gave us hugs and stuff. She was all dressed up. She was a skeleton too. Um, she had like a full body suit on, like a skeleton. And um, this mask and everything, it was hilarious. She went all out. And so then we went on her back patio. I didn't know anybody there um, except for this friend of ours that Tanya couldn't go tonight because Tanya was taking the girls that she works with um, to this haunted hayride. She actually just texted me and said she just got home. She said it was really scary. It was too scary for her. <laughs> um, but oh, I didn't know anybody there except for um, this girl that my sponsor sponsors. This is this girl that my sponsor sponsors. 
um, that I met at the thing that I went to, that Woodstock thing. Who is texting me? My phone is like lighting up. I don't know what it's doing. But anyway, um, I knew her and then the friend that ghost. What is that car like is sitting off in the woods? That's weird. And then um, the friend of mine who goes to the meeting with us on Tuesday sometimes, but I didn't know her husband and her husband was there. And so she introduced me to her husband and Alex and stuff. And we sat there and talked to her the whole night and a couple other people. It was fun. Oh my God, they had a lot of good food. I ate like crazy while I was there. Alex was so hungry and he was so excited because she got pizza, but it was pepperoni pizza, so I couldn't have any of it. And she, got pep uh, she got pepperoni pizza and breadsticks, and then she had like vegetable dip and a vegetable tray. If you ever throw a party, let me just tell you, always please have a vegetable tray with like dill dip for vegetarians, because at least they have something they can eat. And then she had this like jalapeno hummus. It was so good. And it was real spicy, and I was dipping like chips in it. It was really good. And then my friend, she made these like purple monster cookies. They were like sugar cookies, but they were, they were beautiful. And I was like, I told her, I said, well, I better try one since she made, made them. And they were so good. I was like so impressed with them. And then she, had, oh, she had cheese dip. But the cheese dip had meat in it, so I couldn't have that. Alex was dipping his pizza in it. <laughs> and then... She had fun fatty, <laughs> and she had Nilla wafers that you were like that you like dip them in. So that was that, and then yeah, we stayed there till about. Maybe we got there earlier than that. I don't know, but we stayed there till like nine nine fifteen, I think. And then we went over to Aaron and Eric's, and um, their party was still going when we got there. She didn't have well. So, my sponsor didn't, like, she had invited all these people, and when we got there, there were, like, five people, six people sitting on the back patio, and that was it, and then, like, we came into the kitchen, and then, like, they all came in and left, and there was just, like, my friend and her husband and this other girl, and my sponsor and Alex and I, and then another group of people came, and they stayed, like, I got about were we there because they, they came and left real quick too. They only stayed like half an hour and um, I kind of felt bad for my sponsor because you know she was really excited about this and it's like not a ton of people came and she invited so many people and like a lot of people RSVP'd and said they were going to come and they didn't show up. She didn't act like she cared. She was like, well, I'm having fun. That's all that matters. One of our, uh, this girl that, um, that I met at Woofstock with her. She works at Starbucks, and so she was making everybody like drinks um, in the kitchen. Like she was making them like apple ciders, and she was making them like lattes and stuff like that that you can make at like Starbucks. People were loving that, so that was cool. Um, it really reminded me though, like of Alex. Like I remember his first birthday party, and he invited like all these people. And, like, four people showed up. Now, granted, it was Father's Day, but, like, four people showed up. And I just felt so bad for him, you know? She's like, this is such bullshit. We go to everything. Like, we go to every bachelorette party, every bachelor party, every bridal shower, every baby shower, every birthday party, every wedding. We go to everything, right? For, you know, everybody in Alex's life and my life. And four people show up. <clears throat> and, um... I remember when we left, and I was like, are you okay? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I don't know, maybe it was the next day we had the conversation or sometime that week. But I was like, yeah, I'm really, I said, aren't you pissed that more people didn't show up? I said, only four people showed up and you invited like 40 people. And he was like, yeah, no, I'm not upset about it. And I was like, huh? And he's like, I'd rather focus on the four people that showed up, you know, than the 36 that didn't. Or however many people showed up. I don't remember how many people showed up. I think he, but, you know, he was like, I'd rather focus on the four people that showed up than the 36 that didn't, you know. And that was like a really good learning lesson for me. To focus on what you have, not what you don't have, you know. And I think that's the whole idea of gratitude. 
which she just got naturally, you know, and it took me a lot of hard work to understand and get, you know, but I could probably use a whole other coffee right now. I'm so tired. I really like my book that I like to stay up late and listen to it, but I have to say I don't like it that much that um, I would, you know, risk my being so tired all night long or all day tomorrow and sleeping the whole day away. I'm going to decide when I come home from brunch tomorrow if I'm going to make videos. I may take the whole day off from making videos uh, tomorrow. The other day I made six videos in a row. And I had a blast doing it, but I think sometimes it's good for me to, like, take a whole day off, because then I kind of, like, miss it the next day, you know? So, I don't know. I may not. I may come home tomorrow and want to make videos. I can, I, I know I definitely won't make them on all of my channels. But you always know where to find me because you know I'll be over here on the vlog. So yeah, then we went over to Aaron and Eric's and um, she didn't have tons of people either. I was kind of surprised. Like the last couple years, like she's been doing this for years, but you know, when she was with her ex. Um, I think that's when it started. Because they lived right around the corner from us, too. Now they, they moved. But, well, she's with Eric now, but they're married. But, um... That's so pretty how it's all lit up in there. She has this big Halloween party every year. I can't remember what it's called. She calls it something. But anyway... Um... It was fun. This girl, well, this, I was going to say this girl I used to work with were about the same age. I always forget it. She's like four years younger than me or something, but she was there last year and it was really good to see her and because I used to work with her when I worked in treatment and she was there this year too. So I sat and I talked to her for a long time, but then she had gotten there early, so she left. I sat and talked to her for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then she was like, she was like, I think I'm going to leave. And I was like, okay. Well, I was going inside to get food because <laughs> by that point I was hungry again. And Melissa had made some food specifically because she knew I was going to be there as a vegetarian. Is that not so sweet? She made these um, jalapeno and cream cheese poppers um, because she knew that like I was going to want something, <laughs> you know? And then she made a cheese dip that she made, like, I think more than one, like, three cheese dips. One had something in it, one has, like, the chili, right? And then, like, the one, she was like, the one in the middle is the cheese that has nothing else in it. It's just cheese. Um, because we were, like, sitting there. I was like, I'm hungry, but there's nothing I can eat in there. And she was like, what do you mean? I made you things to eat. And she was like, and I was like, what? And she was like, that middle cheese in there is, like, it's just, just cheese. You can have it. It's just literally just Velveeta. And I was like, oh, thank you so much, sweetie. So I had that, and then we had s'mores. Well, I had a s'more outside. Alex actually made me a s'more, and then he was like, I don't want it, but I'm gonna make it, because I want to make, he wanted to make it, but he didn't want to eat it. So he gave it to me, because he knew I would eat it. <laughs> of course. We just sat around, it was fun. We sat around and talked, and, um, you know, a couple of our friends have kids, and it's like, God, it's so weird, you know? They're like 18, stopped. They're like 18 and 16 now, you know? And I mean, we've known them for, I mean, since Alex and I got together, we met most of our friends that summer. Aaron, or Melissa and Jason were actually met the year we got married. So we've known them for eight, going on nine years. But um, everybody else we've known, you know? longer than that and so what were they six or seven when we met them you know five six and seven and you know now they're 18 oh my god my battery is dying I if I did not bring my other battery I'm gonna be so pissed because I am so far away from home right now I thought both of these batteries were charged I hope this battery 
it takes me up here until I can pull into the gas station. But anyway, it's so weird seeing our um, friend's kids. Two of them are seniors. One of them is gonna go into air, the air for, into the Air Force. The other one's making college plans as we speak. And then another one's already in college. And then another one, she's a sophomore, junior, high school. And it's so funny too, you know, because we've known them forever. And they're just so, they're so sweet. They come and like, they just sit down there and they're like, talk. they're like, hey. And they're like, what's going on? But, you know, they're like adults almost, you know, and they come there and they sit down and talk to us. And we're like, what's going on? And it's just crazy. It was fun though. There was a bunch of little kids over there too, because like some of our friends have younger kids. Um, our one friend, they're like, and they're, this is their second wedding, the second wedding, the second marriage. So they each have kids from their first marriage. Well, one each, sons, and they're the same age. And I think they're like ten. I think both of the, the boys are ten, maybe eleven. Maybe they're older than that. Maybe they're like 12 or 13. I don't think so, though. I think they're like 10 or 11. And, um... Oh, no, because what did she say to me tonight? She said something about... <laughs> he's like an angry... Th oh, she said he's an angry 13-year-old that doesn't like adults or something. Because, oh, the one came in a costume. So, he's a younger one. So, he's probably 11. He came as dressed as a scarecrow. It was real sweet. And, um... Oh, that's the other thing. At, like, my sponsor's party, like, nobody dressed up. Like, literally, Alex was the only one in a costume. And at Aaron and Eric's party, like, everybody was dressed up. Um, like, in extensive costumes, too. Melissa and Jason were a dead couple. And she literally had on, like, a, a, what do you call it? A wedding dress and, like, a veil and white paint and everything. And she was carrying black roses. And Jason was in this, like like wedding suit like groom suit and um he had like white paint bat on and okay i'm back you can kind of see my t-shirt now see it's a big skull anyway that did not look great um i had to pull into the gas station and change the battery i was like in my head i was like oh look at this little like private road that goes back behind here i wonder where it goes behind okay, the gas station Everything's so spooky. Oh, it's like it goes by the car wash, I guess. Anyway. Um, so... I was keeping the thought in my head of what I had been talking about before. Um. Can I get out that way over there? Um, I was keeping in my head what I was talking about before the camera stopped. I was talking about Jason's costume. Okay, so Jason had on like, I guess they bought him like matching. I don't know, no, I can't get out that way. Um, so um, they, it's like the car wash entrance, but I thought it was the exit. Anyway, um, they bought like these matching costumes that were like husband, like, you know, they were dead couple, but that like were, you know, <laughs> They were like bride and groom, but they were dead. It was real cute. And then Aaron and Eric were Ferris Bueller and Sloan from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It was cute. And then my friend was, she had like her hair all done up and like um, pipe cleaners and stuff. And then she had her face painted and she had this like jacket on and, um, like Creed's assassin thing from her son on his arm or her arm and she was the headless horseman. It was really cute. I'm trying to think of what else. There was the Scooby Doo gang was there. Maybe it was just Shaggy and Velma, I think. <sighs> and then my friend was Alice in Wonderland. And of course none of the kids dressed up. I asked Aaron's son, I was like, why didn't you dress up? And he was like, because I'm a teenager. <laughs> I 
And then one of my friends was a taco and his brother was a wolf. The Headless Horseman was the wolf's wife. And then the taco's wife, I don't know what she was. I think their son was a Power Ranger. He's like four. Is he four? He's gonna be older on that now, like five maybe? Oh, he's gotta be the same age as like, he's younger than Carlitos. I think he's four or five, maybe, maybe four. Anyway, then my friend bought her dog, which was real sweet. She has like this pug. Oh, he was like running all over the party. It was just fun. It was fun. Aaron and Eric go all out though on the decorations. The decorations were like crazy. And they were kind of scary and stuff. And my one friend, her son, like he didn't like it. And he was like standing talking to us. This is the one that was like 10 or 11. And he was like, Aaron, I don't like your decorations. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. And he was like, they're just too scary. They're too real. Because she had a lot of like, you know, at the dining room table, there's like a bowl of like cut off hands and stuff like that, you know. And he was like, um, he was like, it's too scary. I'm scared. <laughs> and she's like, well, sweetie, go sit in the living room. There's not a whole lot in there. And he was like, no, I don't want to sit in there by myself because you've got that guy in there. There's this guy that when he like walked by and he went like, oh, 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 that kind of like thing. I mean, it's an old school Halloween party. It was fun, you know. And I love that she does it every year. Her son was like, yeah, mom complains every year and says it's too much work. And then I'm like, well, then just don't have the party, mom. And then she ends up having the party anyway. And she looked at him and she goes, it is a lot of work. <laughs> Aaron will have the Halloween party for the rest of her life. It is so much fun. But there were a lot of costumes there. There were like a uh, husband and wife that were like, like German Oktoberfest people. And then there was a guy that was from Star Trek. What else? Oh, my friend that I used to work with, she was like a dead baby doll. It was fun. It was funny though because you know like we left and from my sponsor's house to Aaron's house Alex is like I think he started texting some of his girlfriends and was like you know like trying to find out what they're doing because he was like well this is a cute costume <laughs> I don't want to ruin it like I want to wear it out more than you know just you know one night and I want to go out and maybe like wear it out to the clubs or whatever and I was like okay babe do whatever you want to do he was like well do you want to go out with me I was like I said, well, by the time that we leave Aaron and Eric's, it's going to be late, and I still have to vlog, and no, I really don't want to go out tonight, in all honesty. I feel like I'm bloated because I ate, like, ton of food, and I just want to relax. And he was like, okay. And he was like, do you care if I go do something? I was like, no. And then um, we got to the party, and then, like, an hour in, I, like, look over, and I can just tell he is exhausted. So... I said to him when we were like driving home, I go, what are you going to do when you get home? He goes, I'm going to completely crash. I'm taking my costume off and I'm going to fall fast asleep. And I was like, okay. I'm like right next to these huge cornfields and I literally, you guys, the windows are up and I can smell the corn outside. Ooh, that was kind of scary, wasn't it? Oh my God, there was a cemetery out there like in this little field with trees and stuff around it. This is kind of spooky, and I drive by here every night, but it's so weird. It smells like fall outside, you guys. I can't even explain it. It just is like... It's a waterfall in somebody's little pond. It smells so good outside. watch tonight what did I watch while I was like feeding the dogs and stuff I put I wanted to put a movie on but like our remote is being so stupid like I can't pull up movies it's like when I try to get it to the movies and stuff it's like our, I think it, it, it it's not the batteries I don't know we may just need a whole new remote when I was in my live stream yesterday you guys 
my bottle of water filled up, pil spilled over and <laughs> I couldn't say that, could I? It spilled over and it got on my computer. Well, I thought I got it dry. I thought it was fine. This is my new computer too. I'm not happy about it. And when I woke up today, it like works, like it's fine, but it's doing some weird stuff. And like two of my numbers now, they don't light up. And I was like, damn it, this is my brand new computer. Like really pissed about it. I still gotta take my other computer in and get a new battery for it. I mean, it has literally been like four months now or something and I haven't done that. I need to make a list of all of the things I need to do. And then like each week between now and the end of the year, I just need to do them. Like one a week. Like that would be so easy just to get the stuff done, wouldn't it? I mean, because if I say I'm gonna do one a day, that won't happen. But if I do like one a week or two a week, I would feel so accomplished by the end of the year. That's what I need to do. I'm gonna make that list tomorrow. List of all the things I need to do. So then I would just know like this is my week to take my computer to the Apple store, you know what I mean? And then when I get it done, I would feel so much better. I know, I was looking at the stuff in the closet and I was like, I still have to bag up. I started all that and then like, I was like, I still have to bag up all these jeans, all these sweatshirts. I still have to take all that stuff out and figure out where I'm gonna take it for donations. I have a couple different places. And then I was like, I've gotta bag all this stuff up and take it all out. And I gotta go through all my t-shirts and stuff. And so I was standing there in the closet tonight as I was putting my vans back and I started to, I actually counted my shoes, okay? And considering that I got rid of, I don't, like, what did I say? A whole, like, bag of shoes, two bags of shoes? I don't even know how many. Um, three bags of shoes? I don't remember how many bags of shoes. One or at least two, I think. I can't remember. <clears throat> but I have, like, like, 40 pairs of shoes now. <laughs> It's still ridiculous, you guys. It's still absolutely ridiculous. 35, 40 pairs of shoes. But I can get racks at the container store or on Amazon or whatever or at Walmart that will fit in there because they have racks that fit like 30 shoes. So I can put 30 shoes over there and then I can put like my boots to like the side of it because they won't really fit in there anyway. And then my shoes will be like nicely displayed, which that's exactly what I want. <clears throat> And then I think, like, going forward, unless I'm, like, ready to get pair, get rid of a pair of shoes, I won't allow myself to buy a pair of shoes. You know what I mean? But as I was getting, or as I was putting my fans back in the closet tonight, I, like, started going through my t-shirts. And I was like, okay, Alex is going to bed. You're going to vlog. This is not a time to be going through the t-shirts. See, like, I get, like, that's when I get, like, edgy. And I'm like, okay, I gotta do it now. I gotta do it now. I gotta do it now. It's like, no, you do not need to now you can do this you know tomorrow or the next day but once I get in there and I get started I kind of can't stop <sighs> my hands smell really clean I don't know why they smell like uh, almost like like I've been in a swimming pool. My sponsor had all of these candles. Now I wanna go to um, Bath and Body Works. She had all of these candles from Bath and Body Works and like hand soap and stuff. Like she had just gone to get all this stuff. She had this hand soap called like Fiji or something. I think she's, I think she may have had it for a while. It seemed like it like was not brand new. Like it was like a summer scent or something. But it smelled so good. It reminded me of some hotel that we stayed at. And um, the candles in there smelled so amazing. What I need to do is, 
I need to go and get another one of those candle warmer things. I swear by those candle warmers. And then have it out like next to where my record player is. <clears throat> and then just get two like Bath and Body Works candles that like match and put them on at the same time so the house smells like that. I think I'm gonna put up my Christmas tree really early this year too. I wanna get a chimney sweep out there to figure out our chimney situation so that I can start having fires in the fireplace at night. When I do like live streams and stuff, that would be nice, you know? I've actually done quite a few live streams this month already. I usually don't do hardly any at all. I'm doing about two a week now. I'd like to do, I'd like to get up to three a week. Cause I have such a good time doing them. They're so much fun. I just for a second forgot that I was vlogging and I thought I was like sitting here talking to my friend. It was so crazy. See, you're like my friend. <laughs> I feel like I was just talking to Tanya, telling her like, oh, I'd like to get it to like, you know, live streaming like three times a week because I have so much fun doing that and stuff. My sponsor's house is you ever, like, go to somebody's house and it's just, it's like, so speaks of them, you know? It's just, like, white couches and white, like, white, like, faux fur, like, rugs and beautiful wood floors and stuff, you know, and then it smells fantastic and, like, all the, like, it's my lip gloss. I keep on losing my lip gloss. And then the lights are dimmed and she's got all these beautiful, you know, Bath and Body Works candles going. Which I really do bath, love Bath and Body Works candles. I'm going to go there and get a bunch of candles and stuff and then I'm going to do a haul on my review channel. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I haven't been to Bath and Body Works in forever. This uh, Manny MUA Lunar Beauty lip gloss, you guys, is so good. I really, really, like, I swear by it. I think it's fantastic. And I think the container is so pretty, too. Just, there's, like, a crystal on the top of it. You can't see it really, can you? It really, to be honest, it takes a lot to really move me to get excited about, I mean, of the kind of beauty products that I use, like, which are basically skincare products, lip gloss, um, lip balm. But I think you guys know by now it's not BS. I mean, I really do. I mean, when you carry, here, let me just show you. carry this many lip care <laughs> lip products in your fanny pack okay but it's basically your purse then you know that you really for real do use those products I really do use these products and I swear by them um, my favorite lip balm I have to say well if you want a high-end lip balm like, if, if I was just going to buy one lip balm for the rest of my life, I would buy this Tatcha. I think it's fantastic. It lasts forever. And the, the case is beautiful. It slips really easily into a pocket or anywhere else. It's not super greasy, and it stays on for a long time. And I think it really does help with keeping your lips, like, protected and things. 
Plus it's just kind of cool because it's like gold flecked. The next one that I would buy is Treat Beauty and I actually don't have any of them in here, but I have them, I need to get one in here, but I have them like at home on the counter. The next one would be these uh, chubby, here they are. These chubby chap lip balms that Delia sent me. I'm like obsessed with these. They're really good. I love those. Then, I mean, I, I like the old school lip balms like this, or uh, lip gloss, but it's really greasy. So that probably would not be my go-to lip gloss. The Manny MUA is just fantastic. And that Lunar Beauty the lip gloss is probably, hands down, my favorite lip gloss I've ever used in my life. And I'm not somebody that likes like scented products like that, like with a lip balm I do, but with like a lip gloss or like a skincare product, I don't really, skincare products, if they're clean smelling, like citrusy or like, like I don't even mind like rose water or something like that, but if for like cleaning my face at night and putting lotions on, I typically more like, a, like I kind of like almost like a clean chemical smell, smell or <laughs> smell, I like a clean chemical smell or I like like a watermelon or like an orange, lemon, citrus kind of smell. Um, I know that watermelon is not citrus, I meant lemon or orange. <laughs> but um, with lip gloss, I'm really surprised that I like the fact that it smells um, and tastes like, you know, cake batter but I do like it. But it's not overwhelming either, I think that's it. It's just like, you can smell it when you're applying it, but like I don't, I don't taste it now, you know? But I really like that one. And, it, and like I said, it takes a lot for me to be really wild. Like when I got the Treat Beauty products, and I looked on their website and everything. Like I was really blown away. Like I was really impressed. I think they're I think they're pricey. They're thirteen ninety nine, but they last for a really long time. And their flavors are fantastic. Um, so yeah, I just I really like their products. I'm getting Melissa some things from there. We were talking about that tonight. She wants the cake batter. I think it's the wedding cake hand cream, and then she wanted a marshmallow lip balm and then I'm gonna get like two more lip balms and then we're gonna do a review together of that because she has she's the one that told me about it in the first place you can get them on Amazon too the treat beauty stuff <sighs> I'm getting tired There I can smell it again, it smells so good. It smells like a hayride, is what it smells like. It says it's 48 degrees out, or 48 degrees outside, but it doesn't feel that cold. I had my hoodie in the back seat, because so I was like worried I was gonna get cold outside. You guys want to see the cornfields? I mean, it's high. It's scary. Here, we're coming up on it. Here, I'll turn on my right so you guys can see. Children of the corn. Children of the corn. Welcome to Indiana. <laughs> this is like every street out in the country. Cornfields, 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 cornfields. But it smells so fantastic. I was just thinking about Lost Boys, the movie. I haven't seen that movie in so long. I was singing that song. Thou shall not kill. It's the beginning of the movie when they sing that song. Well, they play that song in the background. They're coming out of that carnival or whatever. 
I need to see that movie again. I don't know that I really remember it real well. <sighs> I really wanted to read more for Spookathon, but I didn't get to read a lot more. I got at least two books done. That was good. Two books in a week isn't bad for me. And then, I don't know how much, let me see how much longer I have. I'm going to pull in here. How much longer I have of, uh, what's the book called? If all I did tomorrow was listen to books, I could get it done. I have seven hours and 39 minutes. So that's three and a half hours, 40 minutes. So I have three hours and 50 minutes. So I have less than four hours. If I would just listen to it straight through, sometimes I get distracted, phone calls, stuff like that, you know? So three hours and 40 minutes. It was at the end, I didn't know it. get that done. I actually could get that done tonight if I wanted to stay up super late. Should I do it? Oh my God. And then tomorrow I should listen to another book and then I would, if, if I did that, well, no, because I haven't read Hocus Pocus yet. I haven't even started Hocus Pocus. Well, I mean, that's not true. I started it a little bit, but not really. Like, I'm not like 100 pages on or anything. I actually don't know. But I would get four books done. Can you imagine if I could finish another book tomorrow in a day? Like, that would be crazy. That's like nothing. Like there's like booktubers that read like two books a day. <laughs> I don't know why I act like it's any big thing. <laughs> I've like had like some new people come over to my booktube channel and they're like, I just started watching your booktube because I heard you mention it on your other channel. I didn't even know what booktube was and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that is so cool, you know? Booktube is such a great community. I just feel so blessed to be part of it. And it's so weird. Like, that's like where I started, but like most people don't know me from booktube, you know? And, um, but I love it. And... I just love everything about being able to have a place to like talk about books and participate in book tags and readathons and stuff. You know, it's really fun. I want to go in and read some really good holiday books. Last year, um, I read some really good books. What was the one that I read last year? It was such a great book. Damn it, damn it. What was that book? It was about the girl, and she was like a really... I, I, when I started it, I hated it, and then I ended up loving it. And she... Like, was this, like, spoiled rich girl in California, and she was, like, social media, like, famous... And then she like died on like Christmas Eve falling, like coming out of Pilate, her Pilates studio. And then she had to go and like do the Christmas Carol. What was that book called? I don't remember what that book was called. But anyway, I wanna read some other holiday books. The thing is, like, all of the, the main holiday books, like, I've started to almost read, I haven't read all of them. Except for, like, I want to read, um, uh, The Box of Delights. What's the other one I want to read? Oh, I have it on Audible. I want to read the Augustine Burroughs one. I was going to say Wishing and Dreaming, but that's Wally Lambs. And I read that last year. Um, I think I read that last year. Maybe I read it the year before. I don't know. 
David Sedaris, I think, has two. And we wrote Holidays on Ice last year, and that was actually really funny. I want to see what this book is called. Hold on a second. So all I have to do is go through all my red books on Goodreads. Are you guys on Goodreads? Oh my god, you should get on Goodreads. It is so fantastic. It's my favorite social media app because it's just talking about books and it's just like no drama. It's just really nice. Oh, I have ten, two new friend requests. Kim and Hannah. Okay. Approved. 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 Okay. Red books. Come on. My first book this year was Sadie. Last year for Christmas, I read A Christmas Carol, Holidays on Ice, The Afterlife of Holly Chase. That's what it was. I gave it five stars. Last year for Spookathon, these must have been the books I read. Okay, The Cabin at the End of the World, I read. I remember that. Graveyard Shakes by Laura Terry. That was the graphic novel that I read. And then Campfire by Sean Sarles. Sarles. I read four books for Spookathon last year, you guys. And then Small Spaces. Did I read Small Spaces for Spookathon? I don't remember. Then after that, I read Carolyn Kepnes' You. Small Spaces. I remember sitting on the couch reading that. That's a really short book, but that was actually pretty good. That was scary. It's like a middle grade book. This year, I started with Sadie, One of Us is Lying, and an absolutely remarkable thing. All three of those books were fantastic. But I am not anywhere near my challenge. My challenge was to read 100 books, and I've read 32. So... That's like three books a month. That's not too bad, but like, I mean, for an average reader, I don't think three books a month is bad. But it's definitely not what I wanted it to be. I don't know how many I read last year. The year before, though, I think I read like 62. That was the most I had read since I had been on like booktube the year before. The first year I was on booktube, I did like 30 something. But I didn't get on Goodreads until like I start, like right before I started my booktube channel. I didn't know anything about it. It's like a whole new world to me opened up. I found about booktube and bookstagram and Goodreads and all this stuff. I was so excited. It was just like this whole new exciting world that I didn't know anything about, you know? And then, um, yeah, then I got real involved in all of that. <sighs> I know people are like, why does it matter how many books you read in a year? Just read because you enjoy it. I, I do read because I enjoy it, but you know, it's at the same time, it's a hobby of mine and it's like a personal goal. You know, it's like if you would set out to make like, a, you know, a scar, a hundred scarves in a year that you're going to knit or, you know, that like if you were a marathon runner and you wanted to run some certain marathon, it's very similar to that, I think, in that, you know, I just want to, I see if I can do it, you know, and there are a hundred books out there that I want to read. It's not reading as fast as I can. I think people misunderstand it. It's not like reading as fast through a book so you just get the book done to go, okay, I read another book. You know, it's not about that. It's about taking the time and focusing on the fact that you love reading and it being a priority and making time for it, you know, just like you would practicing for a marathon or whatever. And then at the end, the achievement is, well, I finished 100 books, you know. Um, it's just a goal of mine that I want to achieve once, you know. I don't feel like let down when I don't do it. It's not like I'm like, oh my God, I didn't read 100 books. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed in myself or let down. Like, I feel like I let myself down. I don't feel like that. I just feel like, uh, what I feel like is, I know I could have done it if I would have stuck to my plan. 100 books in a year is not a lot of books. You know what I mean? It just is not. 
Um, there's no reason why I couldn't accomplish that in a year, especially listening to Audible and reading at home. If I listened to one Audible book in a week and read one book a week, that's two books a week, and that is over 100 books a year, you know? That's 50, it's 104 books a year. So it's doable. But I don't stress myself out about it too much anymore. The reading challenges used to be a big deal on Goodreads, but then I started noticing like when I would go to like other people, like, uh, well, this is how I started noticing it. Like some of the booktubers that I follow that have been around from the very beginning, like these huge booktubers, like, if you go look at the, the videos that they do, they're all, like, unboxings or this or that. There's, like, or so-and-so's new book coming out. A lot of them now are, like, not all of them, but a lot of them are about um, sponsored videos and stuff like that, you know? Which is cool. I think it's cool that booktubers are getting sponsored to do sponsored videos. I highly support that. I think if anybody deserves it, booktubers probably do. You know, they work their ass off. And um, it's hard to get a huge following on, as a booktuber on YouTube. But they don't read a lot of books, is what I've noticed. There's like a handful of them that, like, they read a lot of books. They know all the books. They know the series. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like... They'll do, like, they'll, they'll get together in a group or something, and they'll do, like, putting these books all together. And I like them all, you know? They're all fun to watch, but they'll do, like, you know, some kind of, like, challenge, and they'll shout out all the books, and you just assume that, that they know all these books, right? They've read them all and stuff. These, like, I assumed forever on BookTube that all of these big BookTubers, like, every series, you know, they had read, like, every book in the Lunar Chronicles, you know, of Court of, Mist uh, Court of you know, Mists and Roses, or... Thorn and Roses or whatever, that they had read every book by Sarah J. Mass. They had read every book by, you know, Cassandra Clare. You know, they had read all of these young adult, you know, fantasy books. And the reality was they hadn't, you know? Like, I can remember, like, this, like, this one booktuber, like, watching her and she would talk about Shatter Me and how, you know, like, oh, Shatter Me This, and which is this book by Tierra Maffei, and I think I pronounced her name completely wrong, but whatever. And then I was watching a video and she was like, yeah, I've never actually read it, so I put it on my TBR this month. And I was like, you've never read it? Like, you talk about it all the time, right? And, um, but she never talked about it like she had read it. She just talked about it, like, you know, in reference to, like, new books coming out. Like, ten books. Like, they, they'll, this is an example. They'll do, like, a video called, like, ten uh, new releases coming out in 2019 that I'm excited about. And then they'll go through, like, the top ten books that are coming out that they're excited about. And they'll talk about Shatter Me by Tierra Maffi, Tierra Maffi or whatever you pronounce her name. But anyway, and, um... And, and it works because these are the people that are getting sponsored on BookTube and then it hypes you up because it makes you want to go buy these books. Because I can tell you that I wanted to go buy these books because I had heard these people go talk about it, right? But then when you actually watch their videos and, like, you, they haven't really read a whole lot. I think that, you know, I think the other thing is that a lot of these, you know, people on BookTube too, like, when they, when they started... They were, like, in high school or, or starting college. Most of them were, like, late high school, starting college. And now they're, like, 30. And their lives are different now. They have, like, full-time jobs. They're done with college. They're not doing what they did before, you know. And their lives are not just about, let's go read the brand-new Twilight book that just came out. You know what I mean? Like, they have real lives and relationships and stuff like that. And so... And their interests have changed a lot and stuff. And so it's interesting to see that, you know, over time on BookTube. Especially since I'm older and I'm coming into it later, you know? Like, I think that would be so hard to be, like, in high school and have all this time and energy to, like, read and read and read and read. I mean, I read a lot when I was in high school, you know? And then, um you know, build a YouTube around a channel around the fact and get a lot of like fame around the fact that you love to read. 
and then um, all of a sudden real life hits and you're like, I don't really have as much time to read as I used to have, you know? And that's what it's all built around. It'd be hard, I think, you know? I'm proud of those YouTubers, though, that are book, like those booktubers that are, you know, have huge followings because it shows that there are people out there. I mean, and these are channels that just talk about books, you guys. Like, they legit just talk about books. And I live for it. And, you know, it shows that books are thriving out there. You know, stories are thriving. People want to hear them. And, um,. You know, I think it's really, really cool that I think, and I assume that a lot of these people, their full-time income is off of BookTube. I would have to think that, you know? I don't think that my income a month on BookTube would probably even, ever, even when I was posting a video every single day, would probably even equal one trip to the mire. <laughs> which is less than $50. So let's just put that in perspective. But, you know, I think there's a lot of them out there that are getting highly paid sponsored videos. You guys, the book publishing world is almost like the beauty industry, you know? It's like there's millions and millions of dollars there, you know? We talk about Audible and eBooks and paper books and Barnes and & Noble, and they're about to put like new bookstores out and stuff, you know? And not Barnes and & Noble, but I think Amazon is putting one out. I heard something like that. You know, there's tons and tons of money in books. Why shouldn't these booktubers be making money? I think they should, you know? I think it's cool. I think it's cool that somebody's passion off of reading would end up becoming, an, you know, a viable income. And now, a lot of these people are writing their own books. And, you know, a lot of the successful bestsellers. And a lot of them are working for publishing houses. And they're doing editing and all that kind of stuff. They're starting, a lot of them are starting publishing houses. You know, all because they were booktubers. And how cool is that? And so it should show us all, you know, that keep on dreaming. Dream your biggest dream. because And follow your passion. Do what makes you happy, you know? I'm going to pull in here and get some gas. Um, cause I am like very, very low on gas and I'm at the gas station and then I am going to end this vlog for the evening because I'm like looking to see how long I've been vlogging for. I don't know. It might be like right around an hour. I want to, um, listen to some of my audiobook now that I've been talking about booktube. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Are you guys participating in the book club? You should, if you're not. Um, anyway. We have some really fun reads. Tonight at this Halloween party, um, the first one that I was at, they were talking about our December book. And I said, oh my God, I have a book club. And it's all true crime, true crime and we're reading that in December. But I can't tell you what it is. Because we haven't announced the December book yet. Wow, I just got washed out in that light, didn't I? Washed out by the light. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing Sunday. Unless you have other plans. Unless you have other plans. Other plans. Other plans. Snake it. Snake it. <laughs> Did you ever snake it back in the day? <laughs> My friend and I used to do that. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing Sunday. Unless you have other plans. But like I always say, do not have other plans. Make the most of your day. Let me fix my hair. Life is not a dress rehearsal. You're exchanging a day in your life. I just like looked at my hair for a second. I was like... It's so weird that your hair is white. Like, it still sometimes, like, catches me off guard that my hair is white. Like, that I don't have brown hair anymore. And I have a white beard and white hair. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing Sunday. Unless you have other plans. But like I always say, do not have other plans. Make the most of your day. Make the most of your Sunday. Do something enjoyable. You're exchanging a day of your life for it. Do something that you're going to look back on and remember. Um, make memories. Let's all make new memories. And, um... Yeah, like life is not a dress rehearsal and we're exchanging a day of our life for today. So make the most of it. And if nobody else has told you this today, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day. Every single day. And you say, you are important. I love you. I believe in you. And you are important. <laughs> and I love you. I was going to say something else and I couldn't remember. And that you believe it in your heart and soul. And uh, most importantly, make sure that you pass on to somebody else and let them know how important they are to you um, in your life. We need to make love go around. <laughs> make love go around. Family friendly. We need to um, pass on love and kindness, I think, a little bit more on a daily basis. So, anyway, I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.